I think you have to, uh, I, I, I think you basically would have to, uh, as far as running for office, uh, no corporate PAC money, um, be progressive of sorts, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, but I, I recently saw an interview that Jane Huger did with uh, someone who was running for governor here in Ohio. Um, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but we yeah, asked her. Yeah, uh, I mean, I can't remember her name for life of me right now, but anyway, um, I remember him uh, asking her the, the usual moderate uh, question, which is, uh, are you are you afraid you're the spoiler? Uh, now, I'm like, okay, come on, seriously? You're asking her the same question that you keep harping on the Democratic National Com uh, Committee of uh, asking progressives, the same thing. So I'm like... Yeah, so I'm like, okay, and I was, uh, I, I guess, technically speaking, I still am a part of their TYT army, um, but I haven't done anything with them, and every time I come up with a, an idea for them, they shoot it down or something of that sort. So I figured uh, instead, of, um, instead of running with that crowd, I would basically go into a whole new market, which would be, which would be I am autistic. Uh, I be, I'm not a green member, and I'm not. I will vote green member of uh, green down ballot, and I will also uh, be voting for Howie Hawkins once he actually does the nomination. But tomorrow, we hope tomorrow. Well, uh, I was I, I was supposed to uh, schedule an interview with uh, Chad Wilson also uh, about the controversies, quote unquote. Uh, that in regards to uh, with, uh, doxing of, can uh, of candidates in I think North Carolina, but every time I try to schedule one, he does not reply. <laughs> but but what he did do was he did um, offer evidence uh, stating that according to the bylaws, apparently you can't be uh, affiliated with other political parties, which Howie Hawkins is with the SPUSA. And uh, as far as I know about, is that not is that kind of against the bylaws in regards to that, or am I I'm, missing something? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I was outside of the green for about 20 years and came back two years ago. Oh, okay. When I, when I ran for U.S. Senate in New Jersey in 2018, and then of course I'm running, running again now. Mm. I'm not. I'm not the bylaws. I'm not the has been around with the green since since the very the very beginning. He's one of the one of the originators of the green he is the originator of the Green New Deal. Uh, he's a run of the Green multiple times in New York. So yeah. in terms of his own credibility as a green there are, I mean, there are few people who have that kind of credibility. And the, the thing That's about it. getting endorsement from other parties so, uh, it, wouldn't it be nice to have some left unity? Exactly, know? yeah. Uh, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Uh, every time I do what, what my life seems like I did yesterday, I, I said that despite that possibility of being a, uh, against, a, against the bylaws, I supported that because it's going for the greater purpose of the left. And yeah, then. I think, Anyways, I'm sorry. I, 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 brought, I brought you on my show to discuss your campaign, and not necessarily yes, that. Are we, are we recording? Or? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, 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 first of all, welcome to the Green Office of Progressive Network. I am Calvin Taylor. I'm doing the introductions, obviously. And my okay. guest, my guest, my first guest, and my uh, inaugural guest, I guess, uh, <laughs> Is Madeline Hoffman? She's running in uh, New Jersey against uh, Cory Booker, um, and uh, that's going to be November third, right? Is the uh, general in the general election? Exactly. November third, yes. We just finished the primaries uh, this Tuesday, and there was a pro uh, progressive challenger within the Democratic Party to Cory Booker, but on his name is Larry Ham. Uh, but unfortunately, Cory Booker's um, connection to the Democratic Party machine in 
New Jersey is very strong. And, and so basically, whooped it, basically whooped his tail uh, from, from, from what I saw. Right. Yeah. Right. He did not, you know, Larry ran a strong campaign. He's got a strong set of values and, and, and strong politics, principled politics, but he did not win. So yeah. he didn't come close to winning in terms of the actual numbers. Yeah. And he won because he ran a campaign and he ran a good one. Um, so... And today, today was the actual deadline for uh, political parties or my opponents to challenge my signatures. Mm -hmm. uh, I filed them on Monday. Today was their day to, uh, deadline for them to challenge. There was no challenge. So right I am I'm home free right now um, and ready. You know, I know who... Um, my Democratic Party opponent is going to be. It's definitely Senator Cory Booker. It looks like that the Republican challenger is going to uh, is the um, Meta is the name. Um, was between Meta and Singh, and Meta is the one who who appears to have won. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then there's a couple of independents besides me. We're running one says uh, she she's inspired by Bernie Sanders and the other is a LaRouche candidate. Oh. And the LaRouche candidate. So I did um, I, I, I didn't know that I didn't know that kind of politics are still around, but apparently they are. Yeah, he, he is we I met we met my camp um, I am blessed of a couple of members of my campaign met both chal other challengers, independent challengers when we filed our petitions on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I've, I've actually been running for a year, you know, kind of trying to build up to this. Yeah. And now for the first time in that year's time, I actually know who my opponents are going to be, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And I'm also, I mean, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. We, you know, not, nobody, when I decided last year in July to run for the political office and got the, the Green Party of New Jersey's endorsement, uh, who knew that yeah. the last few months of this campaign from March through now will be, would, be, would be run in the middle of a, of a pandemic, which changes so many things. Um, yeah. And create created additional challenges, but here we are. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in, in in a way, I, I would think it may may it's a bit easier to get the greens on the ballot on because of the fact that uh, they, instead of having to go like person to person to do that, they in some states are they were able to uh, bypass that to a certain degree and get a smaller version of the of those signatures and online, right? Right. We did get the ability sometime towards the end of May. We were granted the ability to collect electronic signatures. But I have to say that it sounded easy, but it wasn't. Oh, no. Um, no, I can imagine. It was not easy to get, I mean, but, but it was essential. We got about, we got a little less than half of our signatures, maybe closer to a third of our signatures electronically, mm -hmm. um, because, um, and the other, the other part of it is not just that it was electronic, but because Larry Hamm is a, col is a colleague of mine, mm -hmm. uh, he's someone that, you know, when he was running, as, when, because he was running as a Democrat, a lot of people supported him. So many of the people who would have signed my petition, if it were just me, they had already signed his. You can't, you oh, can't yeah. sign one petition. You can't sign more than one petition for the same office. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we we were able to get quite a, f I mean a, a significant number of online and electronic signatures. But the state opened up just enough and just in time for us to go down to the Jersey Shore on the boardwalk with mm -hmm. uh, with petitions in hand, uh, pens that had my name printed on it. You know, you had often for Senate, yeah. which we would give away so that we wouldn't people wouldn't have to handle the state more than one person.
different. Yeah. What are the again on the same end? Mm -hmm. We had our masks on. We had a QR code mm -hmm. for people who didn't want to who wanted to keep their distance. They would scan the QR code. So we had to do a lot of different things to get the signatures. And so, um, like I said, it was just in time. And being at the shore, obviously there were a lot of people who. For some people who knew Larry Ham, but mostly these were people who didn't really know the, the, the different people in the race, and so they hadn't signed anybody else's petition. Um, they were concerned, there were some who were concerned that we would say, well, signing the petition doesn't bind you to vote for me. Mm -hmm. um, nobody's going to be able is not going to go with you into a voting booth and see, you know. But so the reason that we would like for you to sign this petition is because we think New Jersey voters um, should have more choices. And some people would say back in response, well, we don't want more choices. We just want to get Trump out of there. Yeah. We, don't want, we don't want a Green Party on the ballot. We just want to be able to we vote Democrat and it doesn't in, in reality, it really didn't matter to some, most of these folks who the Democrat was. Yeah. As long as the Democrat and voting for that Democrat would either keep the, you know, the political breakdown in the Senate the same or serve to get Trump out of office. Yeah. So uh, I, uh, I, I was trying to uh, find uh, some records of uh, Cory Booker's you know, Senate record, so I, I could then ask you uh, questions what, uh, in what way would you have voted if you were in his seat. But I couldn't find any as far as the part goes, but uh, uh, how, how, uh, what's your stance on uh, bringing in prescription drugs from, cheap, from countries and at the cost, like uh, say Bernie Sanders did with insulin and going to, to Canada and talking about that once he got back? I'm not sure I heard your question because oh. of the, the sound. Um, but did you ask about the, the drugs, the prescription drugs coming in from Canada? Yeah, Is and that what your yeah, and, um, and yeah, and, and from other countries that maybe have to cost, but be just as okay. effective. Okay. Yeah, I mean the, the other the other part to that question. Uh, I'll am, I will answer the first part, but the other part to that question is where Senator Booker stands now as far as expanding and improving Medicare so that there's a Medicare for all, a single, play, a, a single payer health insurance program that would save the country money and allow for people to get the kind of health care they need especially during the pandemic, and especially for the numbers of, of, um, of people who lost their health insurance when they lost their job. You know, when, you're, when your health insurance is tied to your job and the country is going to a, into a recession slash potential de depression, you, obviously the need for the health insurance that's available for everyone Truly, universal health care um, is is great, I and mean, it, it kind of hits you across the face. Yeah. You can't can't not see it. Mm -hmm. But Senator Cory Booker simply wants to tweak the Affordable Care Act, just like Joe Biden. Yeah. If you remember, if you remember some of the debates between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. At one point, Joe Biden said, "Well, Bernie, I see you want a revolution." And I want to, I want to address the, the health crisis right now. But what do you want to address it now or a revolution? And my answer was, well, let's do both. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Why should we have one? Why should it just be one or, or the other? And unfortunately, Senator Booker, for the longest time, was just talking about uh, just the Affordable Care Act, just like Joe Biden. And I think I read somewhere that maybe Senator Booker is changing his mind on that. But, you know, you, wouldn't it be better to vote for somebody who has had been a long-time advocate for that kind of health insurance? Wouldn't you feel a little more confident that that person would stand up for that and fight for that? 
yeah. and they're not just saying it because they want your vote. They're yeah, saying exactly. it because they believe in it. Um, and going back to your question about the prescription drugs, um, of course, Senator Booker had a, a response to that, too, an answer to that. But this was going back a few years now, um, and both he and Senator Menendez voted against allowing generic drugs from Canada to be carried across the border or border or imported into this country. Uh, they would have been at a fraction of the cost of the drugs that were non-generic. And both he and Menendez voted against it. And both he and Menendez um, claimed that there was something else in the bill that, you know, that that made made it so they couldn't they couldn't vote for it. But the prevailing wisdom was that they were in the pocket of of the pharmaceutical industry. Um, and because the pharmaceutical industry doesn't. Facebook or Twitter or any other platform uh, discussing uh, um, the Green Party or just progressives or just the left left side of politics. When somebody comes, when somebody uh, uh, interests, interests me to their opinion in regards to like Biden and other uh, moderates or progressives uh, that may um, that may think along the corporate side of the, the political spectrum, I always tell them. Well, this is how we got here in the first place. Is those kind of uh, uh, legislations? Uh, ACA did ACA did well for a little bit, but we need more. We need a more expansive. We need uh, Medicare for all. It's going to better healthcare. Uh, I mean, they always look at other countries that were bogged down by capitalistic uh, strategies that that like Venezuela got messed up because. Of, uh, of the U.S.'s uh, embargoes on that country, so that um, so 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 that basically just made their currency uh, obsolete even for uh, their own country. They couldn't even use their own currency. And I'm a I'm a big fan of MMT, and I and I've been looking, I've been studying it uh, over the course of a few months, and I've been watching like people like uh, Stephen Kelton, who is a, apparently. Um, uh, on the uh, um, financial committee with Bur uh, for uh, the partnership of Bernie Sanders and and, Joe and, uh, and Biden, uh, but I, I've been looking at more or less of how that that transpires with f the financial uh, uh, monetary value of the United States, and it seems like we would be able to to a certain degree do print out a little bit more money in order to allocate to those programs that would actually help the lower uh, income uh, bracket. Instead of having it go to the bigger corporations that just either uh, buy their own stock backs, which used to be illegal, that's I checked. Yeah, and and we can see if I if I heard you correctly, um, we can see through this pandemic who's benefiting and who's not. Uh, we can see how a CEO like Jeff Bezos is already one of the richest people in the world, is now soon to be approaching trillionaire status, not billionaire status. And meanwhile, his workers, his Amazon workers, I, I participated in a mayday car caravan around the Amazon warehouse yeah. in Elizabeth, New Jersey. His workers um, are compla were complaining that uh, the working conditions were unsafe, that they had limited sick time, mm -hmm. so that they couldn't get uh, personal protective equipment if they needed it. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have unlimited, if they got sick, they didn't have unlimited sick leave 
music time. And so, in, in, even in the best of times, the working conditions weren't great. Oh, and they were getting a $2 an hour hazard pay. Um, and these, many of these workers said that wasn't enough because, and then, you know, put yourself in their shoes, or the, in the shoes of the workers at the meatpacking plants in the Midwest. Yeah. You're being asked to make a choice by those who have money and will continue to profit and make money. They are asking you or telling you, you have to go back to work. And uh, in the case of the meatpacking employees, uh, COVID-19 was rampant in their factories. They finally got someone to listen and shut them down. And then President Trump said, that those plants had to be reopened. Oh yeah, places like Wendy's and other burger joints couldn't sell burgers because the plants in the Midwest were closed. Yeah. Um, and some of the governors in the Midwest, or one of the governors, um, said to the workers in, in her, in that governor's state, well, if you choose not to come back to work, we're looking at, we'll look at that as a voluntary quit, and if it's a voluntary quit, then you're not eligible for unemployment benefits. Yeah. So basically, the, basically the workers were being asked to choose between staying home and staying safe, but having no health insurance, no sick pay, no benefits, um, no unemployment benefits, or going back to work and getting their paycheck but, you know, in their minds, risking their health and safety and the health and safety of their families. That's the choice that capitalism gives us. Mm -hmm. And there's something, in my opinion and the opinion of others, something very wrong with that picture. Yeah. Well, uh, because um, because I'm uh, not exactly the best at doing technology thing yet, especially kind of Zoom, uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll um, end this interview with uh, um, is I, th I thank you very much for joining me uh, for this, my first time doing this. Uh, secondly, uh, I'd like to let you know that um, I do roll calls for every candidate that, uh, that is running. Uh, I, I'm going to try to start doing that every day starting uh, Monday. And that includes yourself, that includes uh, Howie Hawkins, that includes pretty much every Green Party, every progressive, every person that is not uh, affiliated with the DNC directly, I will uh, roll call them and say what, what they're for and all that stuff. And I've been doing that for the past few months anyway. That's what inspired me to to uh, to uh, to get interviews such as this to going. So. What is a roll call? Oh, I'm, I apologize. Uh, that's where I say go to the Green Party um, website and I uh, shout out who, me, who was running and what, what district and stuff of that nature. I just, and let, I, huh? let me also give you, um, I'll, I'll provide it now, my website. Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, that's pretty straightforward. If you want to, if you want to volunteer, if you want to donate, if you want to see my endorsements, if you want to see my platform, if you want to see media that has come out about me over the last uh, over the last year, just go to that website again, www.hoffmanforsenate.com. You can also find me on Facebook at Hoffman for Senate 2020. And I'm on Instagram and Twitter, but I didn't, uh, the, the handles are really close, and I'm not 100% sure what they are. I don't want to give out the wrong ones, but you know, you, you follow me on Instagram. Yeah, of course I do, yes. So if you want to add that to what you, what you put out when you do the roll call, um, I know you, you can find the correct, uh, correct handle to both of them. But I am absolutely confident and certain that my Facebook page is Hoffman for Senate 2020 and my website is Hoffman for Senate.com. 
I and I'll, I also uh, have done a code pen, which is basically uh, some uh, a website I did uh, featuring you and your past uh, speeches you've done. Uh, I will also be putting that uh, on uh, the my comments part on my my YouTube channel. This is going on Patreon, so I I, I, I will put uh, everything that that includes you and your candidacy and just your past and all that other stuff on the uh, tag section. So and I will, and I I'm I'm very good at sharing the you know what of uh, content. So I, I will be doing a lot of that. So uh, and uh, I will be sharing the crap out of not only your candidacy but also this interview and others. Obviously, uh, I also uh, um, have uh, interviews scheduled with uh, with Angela Walker on the 13th. So that should be a, a good one as well. Hopefully, I can get this whole Zoom thing done or at least familiarized enough with it. I can actually do an effective interview on that instead of doing the the uh, this this way. <laughs> No problem. Thank you very much for for uh, for joining me. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Bye bye. Bye. <sighs> well, that was obviously you heard that was uh, Madeline Hoffman, and she is running against Cory Booker in New Jersey. Uh, I will be uh, setting this up on my uh, Patreon, and I uh, sorry about the, uh, the the mess up as far as uh, technology, but I'm trying to get better at this. So either way, uh, subscribe to this channel, uh, become a Patreon. Uh, have a night.